Haven't seen any birds here yet. Not sure if they like it. So this is a recess for the hanging toilet that's going to be in here, somewhere there. And uh, these are warm and cold for the shower, they'll be connected there. And cold water come up here for the toilet. And these are all kind of pipes that are uh, placeholders basically for a lot of other things.
You have like the access to the Yeah, but there was a, a, a leak in the pipe, so I think that's the reason why I'm using it. Good. I have to go back to town. I left my laundry in the machine. <laughs> no. <laughs> in the dryer. Oh, shit. And they're open till 11. I think I'll go down with the machine. There's one in, in, in Tokyo, too. And in Lucerna, too. Max Desconto, the supermarket mm -hmm. in Porta. There's the laundry. We have to, there's the main street and then there's like a small supermarket and they have to go. Yeah. Okay. That's then there you have Max Desconto and there's the La Valeria. Okay. Yeah. Trying to not make mistakes because everything is going to be here behind the concrete. You know, so here there's warm and cold water coming out from that side where the boiler is going to be. That's going to go here to the washing room, then it goes up to the kitchen, and from here it also goes to the shower. Here, sewage needs to go up to the kitchen, uh, a gas pipe. What else? Electricity, warm and cold, so there's five pipes. And they're gonna be all here, and they will be hidden by some sort of wooden cladding, which is gonna be here, and it's gonna be a mirror up there. But because everything needs to be in this retaining wall, otherwise it's gonna be visible, which is not nice. So, you need to prepare everything, double check everything, triple check it. And I need to get some more supplies.
just having a first look at the Italian electric system and switches. In terms of wiring, it's it's following the European standards, but the, the buttons and the, the build-up is quite different than the Dutch system. So you basically have this box that is universal. And from there on, you've got a lot of different brands and design. I bought two just to see what the quality is, how it's built together, and if it's which one is nice. So you have the most standard is three next to each other, three units. Then you have two units, which is good for a universal plug like this. Italy has its own plug, so I'm using the universal. So for Italian plugs and Europe, European. And then you got more. But you don't have one, so if you have one light switch, you will always have the free. Um, which is sometimes confusing when you're in a hotel, you're in the dark, you want to put the light on, you're always kind of like feeling which one it is. So now I'm just looking for a good brand with the best buttons. I'm looking for something dark and precise. One of these could, could be working. Let's get back on the plumbing. Um, I've had a lot of phone calls and WhatsApp sketches going around with plumbers and also some people who commented. I've learned a lot about mixing valves, about storage tanks, about pressure release, expansion tanks. It's, it's exciting actually and quite complicated. Um, so there's basically two draft plans on the table right now. One which is based on the thing that I shared two videos ago and another one which is much simpler. So let's have a quick look at it. So this is system one, which is a closed system with a storage tank and a dual feed boiler. First the water is being pumped through the masonry stove. There's a steel coil here or copper. First hot water goes through a mixing valve and then to the boiler. The mixing valve sends colder water to the underfloor heating because underfloor heating needs about 30-40 degrees. It's being pumped around, there's another mixing valve here, goes various ways and then to the storage tank. 
storage tank is there for if there's a lot of excess heat to catch that up and store that. So this one is quite a complicated system um, because this doesn't even contain all of the valves and all of the safety the pressure release valve and expansion tank is not even part of this and I don't feel confident to build this myself in a very tiny space under stone walls it's quite tricky so that's another ID which is much simpler and a bit more unconventional which consists of a steel tank next to the masonry stove in a hot space so the masonry stove is built inside the stairs right as you see here there's a little door that gives access to the space right next to it and this steel tank it could be something like a propane tank or something custom built is very close to the heat source outside of the flues but right next to or sort of in between the chimney and the stove in a very hot area and then plumbing wise it's very simple the cold water comes in and it's heated inside of here and hot water comes out and goes directly to the shower in the kitchen this is only for winter in summer I would switch to a uh, system with just a straightforward electrical boiler also safety is quite minimal you know you have an expansion tank for if the water gets very hot and if it gets too hot there's a pressure release valve that goes outside that can release the water and then cold water will feed in to cool down the tank so this is a much more simple system compared to the other one simpler to build uh, much cheaper as well because you don't need all of the valves and all the tanks and all of the plumbing parts uh, it's just a steel tank and, and a few extra bits um, it requires some experimenting you know how close does it need to be to the stove how hot does this little chamber get how much time does it take for the water to heat up how big does the tank need to be but um, I can figure those things out once I've built the stove um, and I think it's safer because you don't have a pipe going through the stove and a masonry stove can get up to a thousand degrees Celsius it's it's quite tricky it needs to be done well and uh, I'd rather go for something more simple than complicated So beautiful right now with the, the bright green of the leaves coming out. It's very soft. You know, every day that I come out of the tent these days, I see just a little bit of change. And when I've been away for two days or so, it was way last weekend. I, you kind of miss something and it feels bad. I remember last year I was away for a week in the beginning of May completely transformed the place and it kind of like felt I missed out on a lot. When I lived in the city I, I never was so aware of all the changes of nature that happen every year but now when I'm in the middle of it it's beautiful to experience it. One and a half year now I've been living here and it's still still very happy here. Thank you. 